Hello, F Sharp. How are you doing? So I had an interesting question that I wanted to analyze, and it was around the performance of looking items up in a map in F Sharp. And that's something that I'm using a lot currently for an algorithm that I need it to be fast. But what's interesting about this is that I need to keep versions of a key value lookup. And so I need to know what it looked like previously, and then I need to know what it looked like next. And then the nice thing about map as a key value lookup collection is that it gives you that for free because it's an immutable, um, it's an immutable data structure. Normally, if I'm wanting to go fast, I'm either saying like, hey, can I turn this into an array so I can just look up by index? If I can't do that, just because of the domain of keys that I'm working with, I'll then say, hey, I'm going to use dictionary if I don't care about mutability. And typically with what I'm doing with simulations, I need it to go fast and I, I don't care about storing intermediate states. In this case, I do though. So that was really interesting. And I wanted to pose the question of, okay, uh, what is going to be the most, what's going to be the fastest way to um, do lookups while still using a map? And I uh, kind of have this debate with myself is, do I want to just use kind of the, the raw types coming in that are the, kind of the natural representation of my domain? Or do I want to take those and then map that down to some kind of primitive, like an int or a string, which don't, uh, it may not be the whole uh, domain-driven design type of way of doing it, but it might be faster when you're in kind of a engine simulation type of scenario. So you're just flat out concerned about speed. Now, normally I would want to show you the process of creating these benchmarks and running it, but because I just got excited, I wrote the code, I'm like, oh man, that would have been a per perfect opportunity to record something. So I'm gonna take you through what I wrote and what my reasoning was, but normally you should expect me to be actually doing this work. And so you can follow along with what I'm doing. So what I did is I created a project and I can show you the directory here. And uh, I just created a simple project using the uh, command, you know, .NET new console with the language of F sharp. And what I did is I just had the program FS, I open up system, benchmark.net attributes, and benchmark.net running. And I wanted to look at it several different ways of saying, okay, what, what are the different things I could use for the key in my map? And so I'm really concerned about what's the performance for a given type of the key, how fast is that look up in the map going to be? And so the first one I say like, hey, let's just try raw ints. Um, I... I am not aware of something that is faster than int. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but for the, the work that I do, I haven't come across anything. So for me, my baseline is, okay, can I represent it with an int? Because uh, CPUs love ints. <laughs> and then I'm always curious about like, hey, I love the F sharp feature of units of measure. And so I am defining a unit of measure, which I am calling an index. And I can decorate an int with this unit of measure measure to say, hey, this is what this int is meant to represent. So in theory, the performance should be exactly the same because the F-sharp compiler erases units of measure. But I kind of, I was told a long time ago when I started to work in the real world that uh, it is a, the phrase was trust but verify. And so for curiosity, I say, okay, is this actually true? Is the performance actually the same? And then I thought of a bunch of different other ways I could represent this. Not, and this isn't, this is not me saying like, oh, this is like legitimately what I would consider. But I was just thinking about, hey, here are some alternatives that people might use for doing this. And I just kind of want to see which of the different approaches work. Now I have in my head, when I started this, like, oh, I think this is, this will be the fastest. I thought, before I do this, I'm like, int's gonna be the fastest. From my understanding, putting a unit of measure on an int should have the exact same performance. And then I said like, well, you could also define a record type, which just is wrapping the value. So in this case, I have a record index and it's just holding a single value, in this case, an int. 
And then I also say like, well, you could also put like a struct on that. And so like the layout in memory is going to be slightly different, whereas this is going to be a reference type. So if I have an array of record indexes, that array is actually going to be references to the actual value somewhere else on the heap versus struct record index is allocated on the stack. Well, <sighs> technically not quite correct. Um, but the idea is that this is, if this, if you have an array of struct record index, like this value is actually going to be in the array instead of the array having a reference to where it is on the heap. You could also consider using like a du to represent the index. Like, hey, I'm going to take the int, I'm going to wrap it in a single case discriminated union, and that's what I'm going to use to represent what an index is. And I can, again, use a struct version of that, just kind of changing the memory layout. My intuition told me I would expect this to have essentially the same level, near close to the same level of performance as an int, because when you look at how this is laid out in memory, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So in, so what was going on in my head is like, well, the memory representation is going to be the same, so shouldn't the performance be the same? Again, trust but verify. And I, again, just by intuition, assumed like, well, DU is going to be the worst. And that comes down to just how DUs are laid out in memory, because you have part of it is going to be a tag, which says uh, which you're going to have the tag portion of it in memory, and then you're going to have the value portion of it in memory. And so it is um, by the fact that you have this portion which is saying which tag is it is going to take up more space. And so this means these, these are all going to take up more space than a raw int or the struct record index. So my intuition is like, this is probably going to be the slowest, but I kind of like kind of like the kind of elegant simplicity of single case to use, but my intuition told me this would be the slowest. And so then I went and I created benchmarks and I said, okay, I'm going to, I always define my random number generator. I give it a seed so I can know I can generate the same set of values every single time. So like, Hey, for my domain, I'm going to, I have a hundred different values that I need to store and I'm, creating that list of values. And I'm going to use this, these same values in several different maps. So that I'm making sure that I'm like, I'm looking up the same value, just using different representations, and I'm getting the same thing back. And so I'm trying to eliminate um, all the differences between these tests and just constrain the only difference is what the key of the map is. And so that's what I'm really trying to isolate. And so from there, I say, okay, how many different keys do I want to look up? Correction. How many, how many different keys? Yes, my apologies. This is the number of different keys I'm going to look up. And then I randomly generate the ints that I'm going to look up. And then from there, so this is what I'm going to use. My apologies. This is what I'm going, these are the different keys I'm going to look up in my tests. And these are the int keys. And then I take those same values and now I'm going to wrap them. I'm going to, in this case, annotate them with a unit of measure. And so now instead of having an array of int, I now have an array of ints of type index. And this is again, just a compiler check once this gets compiled down, this should all disappear in terms of like you, uh, when you get to the IL and the x86 assembly code, we should be seeing the exact same thing. And then I create my, my record in my array of record indexes that I'm going to look up and then the struct representation of them. And then the DU representation of these keys, the struct du representation of these keys and just out of curiosity i also put the string representation of these keys and then so now i have all the different ways of representing the exact same data just in different forms i then create the different maps that i'm going to be using for doing the lookup so i have my int map 
And so the key is an int, the value is an int. I have my unit of measure map where the key is an int of type index and the value is still an int. My record map, which is a map where the key is the record index type. And again, the exact same value, struct record map where the key is my struct record type. The du map where the key is a, the, my du representation of the information, a struct du map, which is the struct du representation, and then a string map. And here I'm just saying, hey, take that int and turn it into a string. And from there, these tests all look essentially the same. They're just going through different, rem different representations of the same keys and then the, the different map that has that type of key for doing the lookup. And again, for benchmarking, I'm doing like false work just to trick the CLR into thinking it actually needs to do this work. Because really, if as a human being, I could look at this and say like, well, you're actually only returning the last lookup that you do. So just skip to the end. But um, this is, uh, I believe sufficient to get the CLR to actually do all this work and do all this iteration. So I have one for my int keys, my unit of measure keys, my record keys, struct du, record keys, du keys, struct du, and then string. And then from there, I say like, hey, you know what? This is my main. We're going to say like, hey, go ahead and run these benchmarks. And benchmark.net will look at that class, look at all the methods where I have annotated with benchmark and run those tests. And in order to be respectful of your time, I've actually run this already. Normally I would be doing this live, but I, I just got excited and did it ahead of time. And so we see here is what the results are. And as expected, the performance of int in unit of measure is exactly the same. There is no difference. And this is, this is what we would expect because units of measure are erased by the compiler. What really shocked me is that struct record is terrible. <laughs> like, like, wait, what? Again, this breaks my intuition because I, I do expect records and DU representations of this to be slower just because we, it's not a raw int and there's a lot of, there's a lot of code in the CLR that is int aware. It's like, oh, this is an int. And so I can make it go stupid fast with these additional optimizations. Can't do that with records and DUs. But I didn't expect this. This, again, I would think like, well, if I put this struct, if it's a struct, like it shouldn't have to do this additional lookup. But it turns out that this is slower. I don't know why yet. And it's something I'm going to investigate and get back to you about. But again, this is why benchmarking is so critical because things that seem intuitive, when, it, when you get to real world scenarios, it doesn't play out. What I find even more interesting though, is that string is not that much slower than raw int. I mean, it's like twice as slow, but from, the work that I'm doing and I'm the, the performance level I'm trying to get out of this code. This is interesting because twice as fast is like kind of interesting, but not really interesting. And what I mean by that is this starts to move into a category of if something makes something twice as fast, that for me, that kind of almost borders on uh, a micro, micro optimization. And the reason I say that is because the domain I'm working in, which has jobs and machines and facilities, they are naturally represented by using their name. Like what's the name on this job? What's the name on this machine? And so it would be more natural to just talk about them in terms of their name instead of having to map those names down to integers. And so this is kind of in the category of like, oh man, I'm not sure I would do this because getting this additional boost from string to int is a, 
there's a bit of additional code for mapping from string to int, running the simulation, and then mapping int back to the string representation so the human being looking at it can comprehend it and, and make um, and make decisions based on it. So 2x, not super exciting. So this is really impressive for me that string is as fast as this. What I want to do now, though, is say like, okay, we've been doing all of this with map. You know, I'm going to cut it there. I have, I have another idea that I'm going to investigate later. But for this, I think, I think this is good. So thank you very much. And I look forward to our next uh, performance bite.